It's about six o'clock. I'd like to go ahead and open the workshop. Um, let's see. Uh, this workshop is open in to consider um, a proposal for property development by Mr. Womble. Is Mr. Womble present? Okay. Would uh, before that, do I need to ask for a roll call? No, sir, not on the workshop. Okay. You'll just ask for the staff report first. Okay. Okay. One, one second. I'd like to have a staff report. Uh, Sorry about that. Yes, we do have a staff report. Uh, Russell Brady, our contract planner, has a staff report, and I will turn it over to him for that. Thank you, uh, Russell Brady, presenting for staff uh, the wor workshop for uh, pre-application review 2015-195. Uh, here showing the location of the site, uh, located westerly of Bradley Road and southerly of Salt Creek. Uh, here showing the general plan land use designation for the site. It is designated uh, 8 Point one to 14 uh, residential, and the zoning for the site is R2. Uh, the pre-application review that was submitted and reviewed by staff uh, proposes the preliminary review uh, for the subdivision of approximately 15 acres uh, for 207 condominium units with a community center and uh, pool facility um, located uh, west of Bradley Road there. Uh, here showing the conceptual site plan, I'm not sure on your screens, how easily it is to read at this scale, uh, but just kind of show the uh, what's this, the northeast corner uh, of the uh, facility, just to show kind of the entrance here. Here's kind of the community center and pool that they've conceptually laid out here, and that would kind of be a generally what's referred to as an alley-loaded product. So you'd have the front of the houses facing this way into kind of a green common area, and that the garages would be loaded via an alley on the back. So there's kind of this clustered across the site this layout. And then there would be parking along the uh, main drive aisles. Uh, so at this time, uh, staff recommends uh, the Planning Commission conduct the uh, workshop um, as well as collect uh, any feedback uh, from the public attending. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Uh, do we have any speakers? I have no speakers on this item, but the applicant is here, I believe. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Larry Markham, 41635 Enterprise Circle, Temecula, representing Mr. Womble. Uh, we're really here. Uh, we went. We received the comments from staff on the uh, staff level review, uh, and we want. Uh, we have not designed a project yet. Uh, this is a, a prior design that had uh, that had been uh, before the county actually at one time. And we know there will be some changes for the uh, water quality management plan portion of things because it is, is uh, new regulations. Uh, and also, uh, when this was initially formulated, it had a pool complex, a major pool complex that may not be viable given today's water regulations. So it might, it will probably be a, a different recreational amenity. Um, we we do have the comments from. Uh, from Public Works with regard to the access and what we'll, we would like to do is after this we will sit down with Public Works and discuss the access pointer points uh, to make sure that we're uh, compliant with what they would they would like to see for the uh, for both our access and the surrounding access points. We're really here to get uh, input from the commissioners on uh, what they would like to see in this particular area. We are bordered by um, Han Road, uh, excuse me, Bradley Road in, uh, in the front. Uh, there were some comments about having Bradley uh, be a, a view fence uh, from staff. That may not be possible due to acoustic uh, considerations or, or might be partial, partial wall and partial view fence. Uh, I don't think we have any problems with view fencing along Salt Creek Channel and that would be probably uh, our intent. Uh, there was a, was a comment to contact flood control uh, to see if we could tie into the, there's a, also a drainage channel on our westerly boundary to tie into that with regard to trail purposes, and we will certainly do that. We would certainly like to see that happen as well. Because um, we'd like to have eyes on those areas so they don't become attractive nuisances for uh, you know, potential problems for the residents. Um, 
Actually, we'd like to get input from the commission on what they would like to see as far as amenities. Um, right now, we have a central uh, amenity uh, recreation center pool complex. Uh, would the commission like to see that broken up into uh, smaller sub areas? There were comments from staff to, with regard to that uh, and what the commission would like to see with regard to amenities, uh, barbecue areas, uh, possible splash pads for the kids, uh, you know, uh, play areas. We would envision this as basically being starter home type product. Uh, probably would have some, you know, some children, but probably smaller children uh, as people uh, transition out of apartments into these types of uses. Um, and would probably, before they would go on to a larger home uh, at, at some point in their uh, uh, ownership. So as, as much input as, as the commission is willing to provide to us, we'll certainly take into consideration as we start to work our way through the design process. Uh, as part of the project. So we're really open to hear what the commission has to say. So. Thank you. Uh, do any of the commissioners have uh, suggestions? I would like to let you know that um, we are a little bit short of commissioners. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward giving these other two commissioners a chance to at least uh, give you some recommendations maybe later on. And that's fine. Uh, okay. You're welcome that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, where would you put the uh, barbecues for amenity, for example? We probably would spread them around the site so that be, they would be convenient walking access to, you know, the residents. Uh, probably uh, uh, redo some of the areas. Uh, again, we will probably have some changes due to water quality considerations uh, for the current water quality regs. So there probably will be some other open areas that will open up as part of the, uh, the design for water quality purposes. So we would try to incorporate those at, at strategic locations throughout the site so that it was in close walking distance for the, for the res not, not all concentrated at the rec center. So, so you're, would you maintain the same number of units that you're showing? Probably we will end up losing some units as part of the water quality reg okay. changes. Uh, and, and it could well be that the combination of the two would result in some, some loss of units. So you showed this kind of maxed out and this, then you Yeah, this was a plan that was uh, Mr. Womble had before the county at one time pre-cityhood, uh, back before the economic downturn. Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Womble was advised to, uh, by the past county planning director to buy the second smaller parcel and did so to incorporate it all together as, as one project. Uh, and uh, uh, then we worked with your staff on going through the general plan process and in securing the general plan designation that was consistent with what we had started out with. Uh, and also then we came back um, uh, some, some months ago and obtained the uh, consistency zoning consistent with your general plan. So it's been sort of a long, probably approaching 10 year process yeah, at this point. Right. So. So when you when you mention water, is that your idea, or do you feel that you are backed it's into with that? The, the number of water quality changes, water quality regulation changes that have taken place in the past. Um, I think this was originally scoped in in 2007. There's been several major changes. I think the most recent of which was January 7th, I think, of this year. Uh, so there will be uh, some. I'm assuming probably quite different water quality best management practice uh, facilities yeah. as opposed to what was it planned at that time so and we understand that and so that'll be that'll be probably the first thing that we do uh, in addition to a meeting with public work staff to discuss the and, and the city's traffic engineer to discuss the access so okay thank you commissioner Doty is the I mean I still like the idea of a centralized pool I guess with 200 plus units it's still nice to have a pool um, I think it'd be nice to have a barbecue area, as like you said, spread out throughout where some of the residents can hang out outside, um, especially along the Salt Creek. It's just a nice little view area, kind of op open space viewing with some wrought iron fence back there that right. just be a nice little touch back there. Um, you know, reading through planning's comments, to try and the line, do you think it's possible to line up a driveway with the Rio Vista Drive or? We had a prior design that lined up in that location. It, the problem that it creates for the design of the project, it, it sort of pushes the drive, the, the entry all the way into one corner. And so what we'd like to do is to sit down with the uh, public works staff and 
as opposed to past county transportation staff and see if we can come up with some alternatives for, with, with regard to the access to the site to where it does sort of solve both, uh, both concerns, our concerns with regard to the site design and, and access concerns with regard to both our driveway and surrounding driveways, uh, both to the south, to the south and across the street. So that's, that's probably be the first thing we do. Yeah, because it looks like the north and south, are those gated, like emergency those knocks gated box? Right now, right now it, is, okay. it, it is not a gated project per se, but those are emergency access points. With the knock box may on change. them. And yeah, that may change. I mean, I mean, just with 200 plus units, I think two access points might be convenient, especially if people are trying to make a, a left to go north and cut across, it might back up a little bit. Um, and then do you know which way kind of the natural drainage is? I'm just thinking if you line it up with Rancho Vista, you do lose some of that northeast corner. Basically, you could put everything some water sheet quality. flows right now to the corner where the drainage channel on the west side uh, empties Stop into the Salt Creek Channel. The entire site drains to that corner. So if they're required to do a traffic study, but they also have to take a look at that uh, future CIP project. So even though we would like to see the driveway to realign with Rio, um, this is street right here, yeah. they may have to consider that project because the, I believe that portion of Bradley might be a little bit elevated. So mm -hmm. it might oh, be a the safety. Ramp going over the creek? Correct, yes. so okay. it might be a safety concern if you put in the driveway at the end of that bridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we will contact you to obtain okay. the plans. All right. Thanks, Yolanda. No, let's, we'll just, we'll let's okay. leave this one for now and then we'll, it's probably gonna be redone, so. Yeah, and then I saw on the planning had the comment about the driveway widths and the emergency access. I would definitely clean that up because that, if you gotta go wider, because private roads versus public roads, Yes, we it, it will can, it will be a private driveway system. Uh, okay. If possibly was a miscommunication. Uh, it will be private drive driveways as opposed to public streets. Uh, I'm not aware that the city has a public street standard that goes down to a 42 foot right away than than I know. No, of. actually, the yeah. narrowest we have <laughs> is about 48 wide. feet. Yeah. So. <laughs> so that would be a little bit problematic for right. us. Yeah, and I mean that's so as long as you reach the the fire department's minimum width, then yes. then you're fine there. I was just thinking when I was reading through the planning comments, I was like, man. Your street's got to get wider. That's going to make you redo the whole site plan. So, and then pay attention. Oh, I guess you've read all the notes, but the parallel parking, because it just seems like there's maybe 10, 15 parking spots. So, and again with the redesign, and we we have discussed that um, from the the prior design. It could well be that we'll probably incorporate more uh, right in, you know, uh, right angle parking as opposed to some parallel parking. Yeah. Um, just because most people today don't parallel park very well. Um, now they're making cars that do it automatically. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah. bad we've gotten. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, but I think we can actually yield more parking spaces that way too with, without having to, uh, to go to the parallel spaces. So we are going to take a look at that too. Okay. And then can staff confirm that the density is within the general plan? From what I read, I think it is. I just want to confirm that. Correct, it is. Okay. And slightly over 13 overall right now. And it, like I say, it may change, and it probably could change down. It'll probably drop with right. water quality and all that. So, other than that, I think, uh, you know, here this site plan, there's not a lot of amenities, but it sounds like you're on the right path of additional little pocket parks with barbecues and picnic benches and little things like that. Right. Um, you know, I think the two entrances would be nice. Cause I think if you do one, there's almost a, de you know, a liking of having a signalized mm -hmm. intersection. But if your driveways don't line up, that's really gonna Right. Throw our wrench into it, so hopefully two will create a better circulation for 200 plus units. So, and personally, I would like to see a wrought iron fence along Bradley, some little more visual with some landscaping, and just rather than a masonry block wall that blocks everything. The only thing that we would may have an issue with is the is the um, when we do the acoustic studies, um, yeah. we might have to at least have some wall to to mitigate for the sound, uh, and if we can keep it as as uh, not all wall, uh, that would certainly be you know a potential, yeah. but the the, tra the uh, acoustic study will dictate what we'd have to do with regard to you know wall because it's a function of height of the wall and setback of the units to the you know to to the uh, to the windows. So yeah, no, which is understandable because yeah. Bradley, 
you know, when I cover a call from the east side of the freeway, Bradley's the first road I hit to not get on the freeway to come down this side. So Bradley is a very well-traveled road, so I understand that. But other than that, I'd, you know, I look forward to seeing the new site plan. I mean, obviously it's going to change quite a bit, but that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Um, I had uh, two concerns, both of which have, uh, well, one of which have been reflected uh, as far as uh, entrance and exit from that site. Um, I was looking at the number of homes uh, with regards to getting into and out of that site. You have 207 homes there and I don't think that all of your residents are going to be driving uh, small cars. And I'm just wondering in the case of an emergency um, how all those people are going to get out that one interest that I've seen on the plan. I'm, I'm more in favor of having at least two interests um, that are available to the general public for ingress and egress and as well as emergency services. Uh, my second concern is uh, the square footage of those homes. Uh, are these going to be condos or are they going to be attached homes or are they going to be apartments? They're all, they're all, uh, they're all separate units. They'll be, it will be a condominium map. Okay. But they will be detached units uh, and they will be, they will each have their own yards. Okay. So they will not be attached. Okay. What is the average square foot of uh, the design that you're proposing? I think this particular, uh, the footprint here uh, in with one or two floors is somewhere in the vicinity of about 13, 1,300 square feet up to about 1,700 square feet and change. Okay. But that could change. Okay. They're all targeted as three bedroom. Um, so they're basically, they're, they are small starter homes basically. So. Will this be controlled by an HOA? Yes. Or? Okay. Have to for the, for the amenities and also the internal driveways. So yes. Okay. Now, are you planning on gating this community, or As of right is that now, up it's, for it's grabs? Not, but that we will that will be taken into consideration with the design. It may well be that if we come up with two access points, uh, it might be better not to gate it uh, as opposed to gating it. So but we'll make that determination. Probably after we consult with the public works on the on the access points. Okay. Uh, would you consider also cutting down the number of units there? Uh, or? I think it's just through the natural progression. It's going to come down somewhat. Uh, okay. So I don't know what we'll come back before you with, but it'll be dictated mostly by the water quality provisions, and also the access. If we go to two full access points, it will probably that alone will probably bring down the, the density a little bit. So. But uh, it, it will probably drop. All right. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any uh, comments? Yes. Uh, okay. I, I think you're on track, and we'll be able to see better when you have a landscape plan, like Commissioner Doty said, uh, the new site plan. And it's not for me to tell you how to spend your money, but I would, I would think for that many units. Uh, really nice rec center would go a long way. Otherwise, you're on track, looks good. Commissioner okay. Doney? Okay. Uh, I would, I'm, I'm kind of excited about your proposition. Um, I would be looking forward to seeing the new site plans and uh, um, I would like for you to retain in your thinking uh, quality of life issues as well as um, emergency or basically ingress and egress from the site. And as you know, uh, Bradley is a heavily traffic uh, arterial. And so uh, essentially what you have is just one side uh, for your property, for people going on to what is already a heavily congested thoroughfare. And um, I think that you would want to retain that in your thinking when you discuss the traffic analysis. Very definitely. Okay. Um, I would like to see uh, if you can interact with the flood control people to put some 
nice landscaping around your property. <laughs> you know, bushes or something because right now it's just bare dirt. Well, the full version of landscaping is concrete. So. <laughs> oh, well, we can leave that alone then. Our side will be landscaped. We will have a landscape buffer that, that will that will basically uh, pretty up their, uh, their Salt Creek Channel side of the world. They don't, Flood Control does not do a whole lot of landscaping. Okay. So. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we will touch base with the, uh, uh, Mr. Brady and also the other two commissioners and, get the, and gather their input as well. So and thank you very much. Vice Chair, just to let you know, I do have a speaker slip. Okay. Uh, Would you like that now? Yes. Ms. Miller? How absolutely despicable! 200 more homes and precious little Sun City. Do you want to look like the city of San Diego with plus pollution and trying to deal with their waste in an expensive zero waste program? All cities should be striving for zero waste, zero water waste, or expanded drain for more housing, stadiums, or any other building. Excuse zero me. coal, oil, what is it? Uh, could I get your name for the record? Mrs. Miller, this is just despicable. It's in a total floodplain. It breaks every law, and you all should be fired. That is what sophisticated cities are designing. Obviously, this city can't even control the dangerous streets and dangerous loud trucks and cars that are on La Pedra and going through the Sun City Shopping Center on Cherry Road, gassing their engines. You don't even try to deal with this. This is not the place that we have known for years, the quiet, peaceful rock gardens of Sun City. You need to work on the behavior of your citizens and the amount of undirected debris that is reusable in the apartments already that you have made here. You are the, your decisions are making the air a disposal site for pollution and GHG gases from developers like this, pulling in these bulldozers and then the, the cars, it's never going to stop. You can't add more of this to satisfy these terrible developers who already have NASDAQ and golden parachutes. Why are you making them greedier? Why are you making them fulfill what Jesus says? The rich man will never get in heaven. He'll never get through the eye of the needle. You are like a bunch of robots letting these developers tell you what to do. Are you going to have some barbecues? How absolutely trite in light of what they actually do is Dig up the earth with their bulldozers. I don't want to hear any more of this about the seniors in the village. When you run right over them and give them asthma, those poor people at the case in the Cerros down the street, all they do is talk about their health disabilities. Quality of life, what do you know about it when you're burying it under a bulldozer blade? You have no focus on the reality of the damage that your decisions and the people that come in here and try to sell you a bunch of trivial activities. Don't you ever follow the path? These people are going to take from the forest, take from the mountains, take from the granite, take the open space. For who? Who's moving in here? Foreigners from China and Japan? Not Americans. There aren't any left that could even afford anything you're about to do. No! 200 houses. Retire! Thank you. I have one more speaker, sir, if you'd like that. Okay. Helen Steinmich. Please, please state your name for the record. Good afternoon. Helen Steinmich, 26821 Ipswich Court, Menifee. I just want to express a concern to the commission. Um, we're our homeowners in the, that our homes back up to this new property. And there are, we, there are four cul-de-sacs with 32 homes. We uh, belong to an HOA of 224 homes. We bought our home back in 2005, almost at $500,000. And so it's a concern for us to make sure that when the building happens, that we don't really want to see three-story buildings that mm -hmm. are going to 
ruin our view that we purchased when we bought our homes in this area. So that, that is a concern for us. Also, for many years since we've bought our home, we've been trying to have uh, limited access onto Lazy Creek because it's become a cut through from Lazy Creek to Murrieta Road. And we've tried many times with the city trying to put in any kind of speed bumps or anything. Adding 207 homes on Bradley will create an even more of a cut through for our community. And so that is a concern to us as well. Um, a lot of the homeowners that live on this on the Boyton um, that back up to, to this property um, never got any kind of information regarding the workshop. So I'm hoping that as things go forward that um, all those homeowners as well will receive notices to know what's going to happen in front of our properties or in behind our property. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, can we, staff, can we check and make sure that those homeowners got notification? Because it said it was notified within 300 feet. Yeah. Correct. From the western boundary, they should have been notified. Correct. It was notified within 300 feet, and because of the channel, uh, all, th this is the property boundary right here, and because the channel immediately to the west takes up some space there, then that means there's not a lot of the homes on the west side of the channel then that, that are included within that 300 foot radius. Okay. Do we normally contact uh, like the local HOA? She, she mentioned that uh, HOA was, they belong to an HOA that's across the channel. Do uh, we normally just send them a courtesy? Not, or is not, that something that we normally do? Not by default. Uh, we don't send to the HOAs okay. as noticing. Um, Okay. But that's something as far as it, once it becomes a real application for the development, uh, if there's a request by the HOA to be noticed of any future, um, um, uh, you know, CEQA document release or, or public hearing notices, that's something that they can request once it becomes an application. Application. Okay. Ma'am, can you just make sure the homeowners on the east side of Boykin were at least notified? My next door neighbor was not notified. So okay. Can we go back to that aerial map? Because which, because you aren't. I'm on, I'm on a switch, my house. There's Boykin, Lambert. Oh, south that is. Is it further south? I see Boykin, because I. There's four cul-de-sacks. Yeah. Right. Back up to that property. Oh, so you're one of the, the okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. So she's there's beyond the three. Of those cul-de-sacks. But only probably three or four homes would actually back up to that. And. Yeah, I just want to, because it, I mean, given the creek's maybe 100 feet wide, plus 100, I mean, I'd like to think that everybody in those cul-de-sacs was notified, so I just want to. I'm not sure, is it, is it going, you say it's going to be a three-story? <coughs> no, it's going to be short. Uh, that, and, that yeah, what I, what I would suggest is, and to staff is, is that we can certainly increase the notice radius whenever we come back before you with regard to, so we would even start the notice at the at the western boundary of their parcels as opposed to take into account the flood control channel we we do that quite often with where, where there's things like this where there's something in in between that would preclude noticing so uh, we can certainly increase the radius the radius notice so when we come back could you also include the hoa yes, I'm gonna give as a matter of course my card and she right. I'm more happy to meet with her and, and talk with her and her association so. all right thank you mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? I guess the only, Yolanda, can you just check? Because, I mean, I could definitely see her concern about people cutting through Marietta Road mm -hmm. through that. If we can just take a look at that. Or yeah, I actually uh, took some notes, so I'm going to discuss that with our traffic uh, guy. Perfect. Yeah, because I can see where people don't want to go to Newport and not necessarily go on the speed limit cutting through there. Mm -hmm. so. But, ma'am, I appreciate you coming up and talking. I mean, it's, it's things like that that, you know, yeah. The staff yeah. might not see or recognize because, I mean, traffic's like water. It finds its easiest course, course. from point A to point B. And mm -hmm. we yeah, and we all sit here and go, oh, well, why wouldn't you go, Bradley, to Newport back up to many feet? But as a resident, you know way better than what we do. So appreciate you speaking. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. other button. Do we have any other issues to discuss? Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, close the workshop. Oh, we, don't, we don't need a motion if it's closed. You just adjourn. Okay. 
Uh, so we take a break until okay. o'clock. Well, um, this uh, workshop is hereby closed. <laughs> and we look forward to uh, getting some updated information from you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I would like to hereby call the Planning Commission to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, can you call the roll? Yes, sir. Commissioner Doty. Here. Commissioner Madrid. Here. Vice Chair Phillips. Here. And I'll note Commissioner Thomas and Chair Carwin are absent. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, will everyone stand and please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? Place your hands over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, do we have any agenda modifications? No, sh no sir, as posted. Okay. Um, does the commission have any comments pertaining to the agenda? Yes, I would like to remove consent item 8.1 from the consent calendar. Okay. Um, First, we, gotta, we have to go through uh, public comments and approval of meeting minutes before that. Okay. Uh, do we have any public comments? No, sir, I do not. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Um, do we have any uh, comments of pertaining to the minutes, or can we get the minutes approved? I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes. Second. You can just do an all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The minutes have been approved. Um, I guess next, do we have any public comments? No public comments, sir. Okay. And that moves you to your consent agenda. Okay. Now, uh, are there, uh, we have the consent items in a, and we have a concern there that we would like to have a commission, one of the commissioners decided to pull one of the items. Uh, can we get some elaboration on that? Council member, or oh, sorry, Commissioner uh, Doty, you like to pull both items? Yes, I like to pull items 8.1 and 8.2. Okay. We have any discussion? Um, no, at this time, uh, the applicant I've been notified would like to actually um, um, continue uh, both of the items um, to a later date. Okay. So if council, uh, I'm sorry, if the commission uh, desires to do that, you could um, take a vote to do that if you choose. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, can we entertain a vote to uh, continue that item to a, to a date? Sure. So uh, we'll need uh, one motion and vote. So we actually need two different uh, motions because it's two different items. So okay. if uh, one of the commissioners has a motion to continue item 8.1, uh, then we can get going with that. A motion that we, con a motion that we continue 8.1. Second. And I'll do a roll call vote, please. Okay, can we have a roll call vote? Commissioner Doty. Yes. Commissioner Madrid. Yes. Vice Chair Phillips. Yes. That motion has been approved. Uh, can we have an, um, a motion to pull uh, item 8.2? Am I doing this right? Just to continue item Yeah, 8. continue. Thank you. Rather. Mm -hmm. You get the first one. Yeah. Motion that we continue item 8.2. Second. Commissioner Doty. Yes. Commissioner Madrid. Yes. Vice Chair Phillips. Yes. That motion has been approved. Let's see. Uh, do we have any uh, community development director comments? None this evening. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, attorney comments? None this evening. Uh, we have any other discussion items? Well, hearing none, I 
would like to have an entertainment for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>